Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to talk about cyclic groups. So, cyclic groups. So, first, we need uh, some very important notation. So, notation. So if G is a group, if G is a group, and X is an element of G, then we're going to define the following set. So this set with angle brackets denotes the set of all powers of x, all powers of x, namely, so we can write it um, two ways. So if the operation is simply multiplication, it's the set containing x to the n such that where n is an element in the set of integers. If g is written additively, so if g is written additively, then the set can be written as follows. It's the set containing all powers of x. So it's nx such that n is an integer. So what is a cyclic group? So we say a group G is cyclic if there exists some x in G such that G is equal to angle bracket x angle bracket. And in this case, in this case, x is called a generator is called a generator of big G. Okay, so in other words, X generates big G. So G is the set of all powers of X. Okay, all powers of X. A cyclic, loop, a cyclic group can have more than one generator. So let's look at various examples of uh, cyclic groups. Let's start with a simple example here. n is a natural number. Recall by natural numbers, we start at 1. And we'll look at g equal to the group of integers, modulo n. And here, the operation is circle plus, and its addition, modulo n. So in this group, 1 is a generator, always. right? 1 is a generator. You can get every element using 1. right? So for example, we have 1, and then 1 circle plus 1 is equal to 2, and then 1 circle plus, uh, circle plus 1 is equal to 3, assuming n is, is bigger than um, 3 etc. And if you have 1 circle plus dot 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 circle plus 1 and you have n minus 1 copies here, you're just going to get n minus 1. Okay, you're just going to get n minus 1. Recall uh, this group is all the numbers from 0, 1 all the way to n minus 1. And then what happens is when you have n copies of 1, so if you do 1 circle plus dot dot dot. So if there's n of these, right, 
there's n of these, so if you have n copies, you just get zero, right? Because if you add one to itself, you have n, n ones, you get n. So how does the addition work, right? So n goes into n one time, and the remainder is zero. So you do get zero in this case. So one is always a generator for this group. So you would write z sub n equals angle bracket one, right? That's how you would write it. So the additive group of integers modulo n is a cyclic group, and it's always generated by one. Let's look at another example. Let's look at a specific case. How about when n is equal to five? We would have z sub five. And here the operation would be addition modulo five, right? The addition modulo five. And we know one is going to be a generator, but are there others? It turns out every non-identity element is going to be a generator because five is a prime number, but that's something uh, we'll talk about later. Let's just brute force it. So we know z sub five contains the following numbers, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's, let's check three. Three should be a generator. So three is an element in this group. So three is equal to three. Right, three is equal to three, so we have three. Oh, zero times three is is zero, so we have zero. So check, check. What about um, two times three? So two times three is just three plus three. That's six, and then five goes into six one time. The remainder is one. So three plus three is one. So we have zero, one, and three. And if we have three circle plus three circle plus three, we get nine. So modulo five, it's going to be four, right? Because five goes into nine. 5 goes into 9 one time, the remainder is 4. So we have 4. We have 3, circle plus 3, circle plus 3, circle plus 3. We get 12. The 12 is equal to 2 here, right? Because 5 goes into 12 two times, and the remainder is 2. So what do we have? We have 1. Let's check. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 0. Yep, that's all of them. So z sub 5 is equal to the cyclic group generated by three. So it's the same thing. So it is a cyclic group. So three generates um, this, this group. Let's look at one more example. Really famous example is where G is simply the set of integers. And here the operation is just regular addition. So operation is just plus, okay, just plus. And so one is a generator, right? One generates this thing. So one generates z under addition, right? So we would write z equals angle bracket one, right? Because you get one, you get one plus one is two, one plus one plus one is three. So you get all of those numbers. You also get zero, right? Remember uh, what this means. This is equal to the set of all, let me write it like this so you see it. It was x and x such that n is in z, right? So here n is um, an integer and x is one. So it's n one, n is in z. So obviously that's just, that's just z, right? And then if you pick um, n equals zero, you get zero times one, so you get zero. So zero is certainly uh, in the set of integers, so you have it. It's in this set, so it's in the set of integers, no problem there. Also, all the negative numbers are there too. For example, negative two is there because you can pick n to be negative two, so you get negative two, so it checks. Um, likewise, you can use negative one. So negative one generates z under addition. So uh, this group has two generators, one and negative one, one and negative one. A couple more examples, why not? Just keep going. Um, just something to consider. Say you have just a question here. Say you have x and g, right? Just just some random x. Um, what what do the powers of x look like? So you have infinitely many powers of x, right? So you have like x to the negative three, x to the negative two, x to the negative one, x to the zero, x to the one, x to the two, x to the three, right? You have infinitely many powers. Right, infinitely many powers of x. Uh, so maybe, maybe some of these are the same, right? Maybe like x to the negative two is x to the three, right? That could be the case, but it depends on g, right? It depends on g.
right? So it would depend uh, on G because it's cyclic. Everything cycles, hence the name cyclic, right? As, as you can see above in this example, uh, things cycle. If I would have gone uh, one more here, if I would have done three circle plus three circle plus three circle plus three circle plus three, that's uh, five threes, right? Here we had one, two, three, four. So five threes is 15. Five goes into 15. Three times remainder is zero. So it cycles back to zero. So um, the, the terms cycle. So in this case, this could be true, but it would depend on G. A couple other examples, maybe two more or one more. Um, if you take G to be the set of real numbers and your operation here your operation here is plus, so addition. Uh, G is not cyclic, so G is not cyclic. This is not a cyclic group. The real numbers are not cyclic, right? Not cyclic. If it was cyclic, let's say you had a generator X. So if you have a, a generator that's X and X is not zero, right? Because there's no way zero can generate this. You would just get zero. Then the element one half X would not be in this set. You might say, well, why? Well, this set is the set of all integral powers of x, like that, right? So there's no way um, this would work, right? Because 1 half is not equal to n. You could prove it with a little more uh, justification. I'm pretty sure I have a video where I go through it and I justify it a little more uh, rigorously. Uh, likewise, um, the rational numbers are not cyclic. So uh, the rational numbers under addition uh, is not are not cyclic, or let me say is not cyclic. So I hope this video has helped. Um, I took a little bit longer than expected. That's it. Thanks for watching.